Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Alicia Gabidon and I am an adult services librarian with Vaughan Public Libraries. Before we begin the formal program, I would like to share a few housekeeping notes. To, to minimize interruptions, participants will be set to mute and videos will be turned off. For accessibility, we have turned on the live transcript feature. A question and answer period will follow the lecture. Questions can be submitted anytime during the lecture via the chat function and are moderated by the co-hosts. Tonight's lecture is being recorded and will be made available on VPL's YouTube channel. I will now pass it over to Lisa McDonough to introduce tonight's lecture and our speaker. Lisa. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa McDonough. I'm the Deputy CEO Customer Experience for Vaughan Public Libraries, and we'd like to welcome you all to the latest installment in our lecture series reflecting on racism and discrimination. On behalf of Vaughan Public Libraries, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that our libraries were built upon the territory and treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for the Toronto P Purchase Agreement or Treaty 13. We also recognize we are situated in the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat and the Haud Haudenosaunee who occupied this land before the arrival of European settlers. The city of Vaughan is currently home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. We acknowledge their contributions this lecture series would not have happened without the vision and support of the vice chair of the Vaughan Public Library Board, Gary Thompson. And we thank his commitment to education, inclusivity and equity, all of which are core beliefs of our library system. I also want to thank the staff and speakers who have brought this series to life over the past few months. We've discussed a range of top topics and confronted some uncomfortable truths that are necessary to create a better and fairer society. Tonight, we are honored and to welcome Superintendent Ricky Virapan as our speaker. With 34 years of experience at York Regional Police and a master's in conflict analysis and management, Superintendent Virapan is an expert on community policing. Today, he will discuss the internal and external programs of York Regional Police initiatives combating racism, discrimination and hate crimes, community outreach and relationship building, while policing with a global mindset and serving one of Canada's most diverse communities. Please join me in giving Superintendent Virapan a warm welcome. I'll now pass it over to you, Ricky. Thank you. Thank you very much and good evening, everyone. And uh, first of all, let me just say it's an incredible pleasure and honor to be here. Um, thank you for the very kind invitation to have uh, York Regional Police participate in this excellent uh, speaker series that you've been running for the past uh, number of months. Um, I am, uh, I am uh, Ricky Verpen, the uh, superintendent in charge of uh, community services for York Regional Police. Uh, and I hope through the presentation this evening, we will have an opportunity to discuss uh, some of the uh, areas that York Regional Police has been putting a lot of focus uh, in the last couple of years, um, particularly in the last 18 months with, uh, with, with so many uh, different uh, activities happening within our communities, really forcing us to reflect on how we, how we serve and how we uh, police in multicultural communities. Um, this evening's presentation is entitled Reflecting on Racism and Discrimination, Community Policing Through the Lens of Human Rights. And um, it was put together um, we've used this in, in a number of different uh, venues and uh, for tonight's presentation I've just uh, made a few tweaks to it but I look forward to your questions and uh, and some of the comments uh, as, as we move as we move through the presentation uh, I'll tell you the uh, the presentation overview that I have uh, for tonight uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about first of all just the just the general nature of York region the community in which we all live uh, which we see as a microcosm of the world uh, with an incredible um, display of human diversity. Uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about policing with a global mindset and what that means in the context of uh, serving in a multicultural community like York Region, uh, where we have 2,300 uh, members of York Regional Police uh, who are moms and dads and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters, but who come together with a common purpose every single day 
to serve and safeguard our communities in the Oak Region. Uh, I will be speaking a little bit about racism and discrimination and the context uh, that it has to York Regional Police um, and some of the work that we've done in this area. And there will be a link that I'll be sharing with you as well uh, with regards to some of the work that's been done in this particular area. Uh, certainly when we're speaking about the nature of our community, we can't um, uh, forget about hate crime and the importance of investigation and prevention and how robust those systems must be in order for everyone to feel a sense of belonging and well-being within the York region. Um, the presentation, as you know, is uh, focusing on policing through the lens of human rights and not human rights through the lens of policing, which is something very, very different. Uh, but we'll also speak about some of the early intervention work that we do at York Regional Police, uh, focusing heavily on education and the importance of education when uh, serving multicultural communities. And uh, certainly policing through the lens of human rights, again, which will sort of encompass uh, everything that we do in this, uh, in this presentation. And, um, and I'll end with the video and then we'll go into some questions. So thanks again for the, uh, for the warm introduction and um, look forward to, uh, to, um, to sharing the presentation. So the regional municipality of York, as you may know, uh, is truly what we see as a microcosm of the world with a strong legacy of indigenous history and traditions, culture, as well as residents who trace their ancestry and their heritage to literally all corners of the world. Uh, also in our region where we witness an intersection of cultures and belief systems, ethnicities, race, races, religion, spirituality, value systems, practices, and nuances from around the world, we value and honor and celebrate the 1.2 million expressions of human diversity and its contributions to the vibrancy and richness of our communities. And that number, as you may know, is expected to grow to 1.79 million by 2041. In fact, York Region is one of the fastest growing and most diverse communities in all of Canada with residents, with truth, uh, with, with residents from 230 distinct ethnic origins who speak over 120 different languages and dialects. And according to Stats, uh, uh, Stats Canada, the city of Markham uh, is uh, considered the most ethno-culturally diverse municipality in all of Canada with, a, with roughly, uh, with roughly 70, between 75 and 78% of the people from in the city of Markham that were born outside of Canada. And that number is even higher statistically than the city of Toronto and any of the other major urban centers in Canada. Uh, and on another, uh, uh, and another interesting fact about that is that the municipal electoral ward in the city of Markham, which was Ward 7, uh, which is in the southeast corner of uh, the city of Markham, roughly 92% of the people that live within that, within that area were born outside of Canada. So it's perhaps the most ethno-culturally diverse municipal ward in all of Canada. And again, York Regional Police has the incredible privilege to serve all of these communities. Um, so on an annual basis, Canada welcomes roughly 300,000 newcomers with, and with, a, with roughly 11,000 of them making York Region, uh, York Region their home. Census data also tells us that roughly 49% of our residents identify as visible minority or racialized, and 47% are immigrants, with the majority from China, Iran, India, the Philippines, and Pakistan, and with York Region having the third highest immigrant population in all of Canada. In addition to the, this incredible diversity, when you look at faith affiliations with over 300 places of worship within York Region, we are also proud to be home to all of the major world religions and faith traditions, including multiple expressions of creed. In fact, in one area of York Region, where multiple world religions are housed, and which we fondly refer to as our avenue of faith, you can even find a mosque and a synagogue who as neighbors share the same parking lot. And not only do we have uh, all of the incredible uh, diversity of major world religions, but we also have many of the denominations under each of those respective world religions within the community as well. And just from the slide, you can see roughly 77% of York Region's population have a religious affiliation, 
broken down into six major um, uh, world uh, religious faiths, as you can see on the screen. In our engagement with multiple diaspora communities, with strong ties to places of origin from around the world, we also witness the impacts and the outcomes of regional and civil wars, ethnic and racial conflict, or political and social unrest. At York Regional Police, policing with a global mindset, policing with a global mindset further allows us to remain vigilant to the challenges and the threats to diversity at play in our communities, often in the forms of local and imported biases, sometimes prejudices and stereotypes and expressions of discrimination and hatred leading to varying degrees of inter and intra-group conflict. Furthermore, over the past 10 years, the expansion of the York Regional Police Diversity and Equity Inclusion, in Inclusion Bureau from three to 10 members has allowed York Regional Police as a learning organization, greater community outreach and relationship building capabilities into many diaspora communities. Many of these communities have often faced persecution, marginalization, racism, victimization, oppression uh, in other parts of the world, and sometimes even in Canada. Some of these communities include Roma, Falun Gong, Yazidi, Rohingya, Uyghur, Raelian, Rastafarian, and Dalit, to name just, just a few. And as such, at York Regional Police, we value cultural competencies, as well as an understanding of social, political, and historical contexts to successfully navigate our global village of York Region, the service excellence and collective vigilance against hate and its many, many ugly manifestations. Within the, uh, within the context of York Region and bearing in mind uh, the impact of global events uh, in, in local communities, we have also seen in 2020, over the past 18 months, a number of protests and demonstrations uh, focusing on anti-Black racism and uh, historical injustices faced by, by members of Black communities, not only in York region, but all around the world. Uh, in fact, it, uh, in February of 2021, four members of York Regional Police, uh, four Black members of York Regional Police, members that I had worked with and many of my colleagues have worked with, uh, made deputations to the Police Services Board about some of their experiences at York Regional Police. Uh, this took an awful lot of courage uh, on their parts to come forward and to share their experiences. And as a result of that, there's been a number of um, uh, areas of reflection within the organization. Uh, it was an incredible, it had an incredible impact on the members of York Regional Police. And as a result of that, there's a number of different things that are currently ongoing um, that were based on those deputations. Um, furthermore, in July of 2020, we had a number of um, members of Black communities within York Region uh, do presentations and deputations to our Police Services Board, uh, at which time 51 recommendations were made regarding policing and anti-Black racism that were presented to York Regional Police. And um, those 51 recommendations uh, can be found on the York Regional Police Services Board website. I've shared the link with uh, Alicia and Alicia will be able to get that out to, uh, to, uh, to you if, you if you're interested in reading um, what those recommendations entail. Essentially, the recommendations uh, covered, covered nine key areas. Uh, it spoke about consultation, engagement, and awareness. It spoke about school resource officers. It spoke about, about race-based statistics, uh, response to mental health calls, policing budgets and resources, police and uh, uh, police Services Board training and education, police recruitment and succession planning, transparency and accountability, and uh, finally, improvements on equity and inclusion. And those are the areas that were covered in those 51 recommendations made to the Police Services Board. Of those 51 recommendations, 43 of them were specifically for York Regional Police, and eight of them were, were, were geared towards the Police Services Board. So uh, when that uh, link is shared with you, you'll be able to see on the uh, Police Services Board website. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the April 2021 Police Services Board meeting on the agenda, you will see the links to the, uh, to, those uh, to, the, uh, to the recommendations. And please, please have a moment 
uh, take some time to read them if you if you're able to. Uh, as part of those recommendations, uh, we currently have a black community consultative roundtable made up of, of leaders and representatives from many different uh, black community organizations within the region. Uh, internally, we also have formed an anti-black racism working group. Uh, and in terms of training, we, we continue to do human rights, one, uh, human rights 101 and 102 training for all of our members, which is mandatory. We have internal support networks, currently five specific internal support networks supporting our members, uh, including an anti-black, uh, um, uh, an African Caribbean Canadian internal support network, as well as uh, a number of others, and um, as well as an anti-racism action plan. And the anti-racism action plan really uh, incorporates five key areas. One is the development of an anti-racism strategy, the launch of an anti-racism training program, which began in September of 2020, the collection of race-based data in, uh, in employment and service delivery, the establishment of a Black community consultative roundtable, and the hosting of an annual anti-racism forum. So those were some of the things that were captured in that, um, in, in those, um, uh, you know, through the work that we've done at York Regional Police in this particular area. In addition to uh, some of the work that we've uh, done in, in combating racism and systemic and institutional racism within the structure of policing, we are also very, very much engaged in combating racism and discrimination as it appears in many different forms within the community. And some of those areas uh, include uh, hate bias and hate motivated crime, as well as hate incidents. And the way we define hate crime is uh, essentially a crime against a person or property um, based on hate, bias, or prejudice, uh, targeting people because of their identity, whether it's national or ethnic origin, language, uh, color, religion, gender, age, uh, mental, physical uh, disability, as well as sexual orientation. So these are some of the factors. And when you have a, a criminal offense with, a, uh, with, an, with an act of hate, bias, or prejudice, this is, uh, this is uh, the, the most simplistic form of a, of a hate crime investigation that we will embark on. We also uh, engage in hate propaganda investigations um, and hate propaganda in the criminal code really covers three very specific areas. One is advocating genocide. The other one is public incitement of hatred and willful promotion of hatred. And when we do hate crime investigations within the region, um, Willful promotion of hatred and advocating genocide are the two that requires the consent of the Attorney General of the province in order to proceed with the, with the actual charge. Um, from a community perspective, in a, in a multicultural community like York Region, some of the different types of hate crime that we see that target people because of shared and, and core identity are things like mischief, threats, uh, harassing phone calls, assaults, criminal harassment, sometimes bomb threats, and, and quite often online hate. And, uh, you know, one of the uh, very um, interesting things about hate crime victimization is that even though one person may be the target, an entire community is victimized because of shared identity and, uh, and, and, um, and collective uh, uh, shared identity. And so we see this from time to time within the region as well. Uh, there's also another section that we often uh, pay attention to in terms of uh, religious uh, mischief to religious property, and this covers many of the places of worship. It covers property and objects that are sacred, that have cultural significance and value. It covers burial grounds and cemeteries. And when we have uh, places of worship that are vandalized in the region or sacred religious objects that are vandalized in the region, this is one of the sections that we look at uh, when we uh, focus on hate crime investigations. At York Regional Police, we have a hate crime investigation team that is uh, continually engaged in training, uh, not only internally with our members, but also uh, in, in external capacities as well. Uh, some of the offender motivation and, and, and reasons for, uh, for, for, uh, for the hate crime that we see uh, often in a region like York is sometimes based on intolerance where you have uh, um, groups of people or individuals that, that are intolerant of others, people who are different. Uh, sometimes ethnocentric views play a, play a role where one group, uh, a person or a group may feel superior to another group. Uh, we often find that uh, newcomers are, are sometimes used as scapegoats, especially in times of economic recessions. 
Um, and, and we've seen many of those types of uh, incidents play out, people being told, but told, go, told to go back to their own countries. Uh, some very, very nasty, offensive, and very foul types of victimization against, um, against community members. Uh, sometimes thrill-seeking, where uh, often young people are engaged in um, these types of acts of vandalism, uh, but it has tremendous impacts on communities, tremendous detrimental effects, effects on, on community members, uh, certainly uh, uh, having the ab ability to traumatize, uh, traumatize communities as well. Sometimes the economic successes of some groups uh, over, uh, as seen over other groups, and of course, historical animosities. And with the many, many diaspora communities that we have living within the York region who trace their heritage and culture and ancestry to many different parts of the world, we often see um, historical conflicts and historical animosities playing out locally within the, within the, context, uh, within the context of York region. We also find that uh, when looking at hate crime and, uh, and racism and discrimination, where you now have people who are victimized, we find that um, there is underreporting of hate crime. And we know that uh, within the region. So the reports that we get in, at York Regional Police are based specifically on what people report to us, even though we know that there, are, there may be people within the community that have never in, been engaged with the police, that may be fearful of uh, engaging with the police for various reasons, such as fear of reprisal, fearing that if they, if they make the report, they may be re-victimized. Sometimes language may be a barrier. Uh, sometimes fear and mistrust of law enforcement and police itself. You know, in many parts of the world, um, policing is, uh, can, be, can be very different than, than how it is in, in uh, North America. And as a result, um, sometimes the, the uniform can be seen as historically, uh, uh, as, as uh, symbolically threatening. And as a result of that, uh, sometimes there's also a fear that the complaint may not be taken seriously. Uh, fear of secondary victimization, where a person has been through a, a horrific, awful experience, and now by retelling the story, will have to relive that entire uh, traumatic experience. And sometimes uh, classification, just classification difficulties, not knowing that, uh, you know, that, that someone has been a victim of a crime, let alone it being, being a hate crime. Um, our response to hate crime at York Regional Police includes ongoing training and education for our members and our community and the prosecution of hate crime to the fullest extent of the law, while incorporating hate crime prevention programs and initiatives and working closely with religious, racial, cultural, and ethnic leaders and communities that are often targeted by hate. And in responding to these cowardly crimes against shared identity, in which one person may be the target, but an entire community is victimized. The York Regional Police Hate Crime Prevention Strategy, uh, which has also been vetted by hate crime academics and subjects, subject matter experts as a best practice, has been closely aligned with the United Nations Office of Genocide Prevention model for the past 10 years. And this model places great emphasis on education, creating opportunities for cross-cultural communication, intercultural dialogue, community networking, and other opportunities for members of our human family to deconstruct and transcend the obstacles to realizing the full potential of our shared humanity. And for the benefit of those who may not be familiar with our community engagement um, and hate crime prevention initiatives, the following snapshot of slides highlight our part in contributing towards inclusive and socially cohesive communities. Uh, we have a 10 member chaplaincy program, which is made up of members from a number of different um, uh, religious uh, denominations, including an imam, two rabbis, and a female Buddhist monk. Uh, our chaplaincy program is there to serve the needs of members uh, and their families. We do regular meetings with uh, uh, leaders from around the world, including consul general receptions, where we, where we engage with um, uh, with uh, some of the um, uh, deputy consuls and consul generals, just gaining global perspectives uh, in how we serve multicultural communities within the region. Uh, we often meet with religious leaders from many different communities uh, all around the world. And some of these meetings, as you, you may notice, we have uh, Chief Eric Jolliffe, who was our former chief of police. And I've included some of these photos only because 
uh, over the past 18 months since our new chief, Jim McSween, has uh, come in. We haven't really had an opportunity to go out. So COVID has really put some incredible restrictions on us. But I want to show you some of the work that we've done for many, many years at York Regional Police in this regard. Um, we do menorah lighting ceremonies with our rabbis and uh, members of our Jewish communities on an annual basis. And, um, you know, these have been uh, ongoing for at least uh, 15 years at York Regional Police. We do, we take our members on places of worship tours where uh, members are exposed and, and learn about the, the re religious diversity in the York region, religious and spiritual diversity, and the, and the huge uh, impact it has on, on, on the lives of many residents within the York region. Um, and these tours have been extended to community groups and organizations that we work closely with, as well as many of the equity and uh, diversity councils and committees that we've worked with within the York region. Uh, we do many, many celebrations uh, on, um, with community uh, for various events throughout the year, whether it's uh, New Year celebrations, flag raising ceremonies, community events, and, and, and so on and so forth. There's so many of them that we do throughout the year. Um, we participated for many years with the, with, the, with the Pride Parade within York Region, um, having members within York Regional Police who are also members of the York Regional Police Internal uh, pride support network that we have, as well as uh, opportunities at our police headquarters to bring in interfaith leaders for meet and greets and receptions, and really speaking uh, towards peace building and how do we bring many different perspectives and many different faith traditions and many different points of view from around the world that intersect in a region like York, and how do we use it and capitalize on that towards initiative, initiatives towards safety, security, a sense of belonging, and peace building. Our commitment to safety and security and safeguarding the multiple expressions of human diversity in our dynamic and vibrant community remains second to none. Additionally, over the, over the past 10 years at York Regional Police, we have also nurtured numerous opportunities to build cohesive, resilient, and inclusive communities while also engaged in collaborative work on the inclusion charter of York Region with our friends from the regional municipality of York, who along with, uh, who along with York Regional Police co-chair the Municipal Diversity Inclusion Group. And this group is comprised of 20 organizations from various other sectors, such as hospitals, school boards, and each of the nine municipalities, uh, the United Way, York Region Children's Aid Society, and conservation authorities. Um, furthermore, York Regional Police has also taken advantage of multiple opportunities for positive community engagement with thousands of newcomers in, the York, in York Region's five immigrant welcome centers over many, many years. And uh, we've, we have a contract with the welcome centers where our officers from the diversity unit visit and, uh, and really uh, do presentations and really engage with uh, people in those, in those settings, trying to break down some of the barriers and um, you know, that, that a police uniform could, could potentially have. And in this regard, looking ahead on, on the heels of the completion of the inclusion charter of York Region, we are pleased to announce that on March the 10th, 2020, which was just over a year ago, York Regional Police officially opened the human rights education classroom. The opening of this global education classroom began with a special room naming ceremony by an elder from the Chippewas of, the, of Georgina Island First Nations, our closest indigenous community and partner in education. And the name Desa Winnigan, which was the name given to the classroom by an elder from the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation, means accepting into one's heart, a space that teaches children to accept and love, love others for who they are. This global education classroom is in addition to our community safety village, which serves a post uh, pre-COVID serves approximately 40,000 children annually from kindergarten to grade five, with close to half a million York Region students passing through its doors over the past 10 years. And this early intervention approach and investment in our children and youth growing up in multicultural communities will utilize the lens of human rights, human responsibility, and indigenous education to inspire and empower future generations through age appropriate education in human rights, conflict resolution, and peace building to navigate global communities as they become our future leaders and global citizens of York Region in this new millennium. 
And the, and the following photos I have right here, I will just explain to you, is uh, a photos of the, of the human rights education classroom. So this is uh, the, uh, the, the west end of the community safety village where the human rights education classroom is, uh, is located. Uh, the, the circular structure on the, on the left of this, uh, of this photo is the human rights education classroom with a hallway leading to it. When you uh, enter the classroom, again, the name of the classroom is Desa Winnigan, which was um, uh, provided to us by the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nations. Uh, and this is a, a snapshot of the inside of the classroom. Uh, the, the hallway leading down to the classroom has um, over 200 flags reflective of different uh, uh, countries of the world, uh, aligned with uh, a number of posters placed at a three foot height level for young people. Uh, and each of those are social justice themed posters. And each of those posters can be a lesson plan unto itself, teaching the importance of human rights. Um, the most recent um, addition we have in between the space between the flags and those posters are a series of posters on human rights education focusing on the 30 uh, articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, as you get into the classroom, we've got a display cabinet uh, displaying different types of artifacts and books and uh, ornaments from different parts of the world. We've got two more uh, display cabinets inside the classroom. But as you walk through the, uh, through the hallway, uh, getting close to the door, uh, we have a number of quotations that is really um, just created to, 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 you know, to encourage thinking about human rights. Um, the first one is by, a, by an anthro Canadian anthropologist named, named Wade Davis, which really says, the world into which you were born is just one model of reality. Other cultures are not failed attempts at being you. They are unique manifestations of the human spirit. The second uh, quote, uh, as you move further down, is one by a, uh, uh, a, school, a school teacher from the York Region District School Board uh, by the name of Tanya Khan, who uh, passed away suddenly a few years ago. And uh, this was one of, uh, and I worked with Tanya at the uh, York Region, um, uh, uh, the, the York Region District School Board Equity Advisory Committee. And this was one of her favorite quotes. Human rights is not a buffet where you can choose some things and not others. If you believe in human rights, you believe in it for all people. The third quote that we have down the hallway is by Nelson Mandela. Um, and, it's, and it speaks and it says, to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that enhances the rights and freedoms of others. And all of these now lead us into the, uh, into the human rights classroom. When you walk into the classroom, we have a land acknowledgement on the wall that was created specifically by the Chippewas of Georgina Island for York Regional Police and for the for the classroom. Uh, we have a, um, a mission statement um, and the mission statement is to promote learning and education in human rights and responsibilities, peace building and global citizenship while inspiring action towards peaceful coexistence in an ever-changing world. It's dedicated to all children eager to explore the strength and potential of our shared humanity. Inside of the classroom, we have the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations and on the wall, so, and the classroom is built in a, in a circular shape uh, um, and, and along the wall, again, at a three foot height, are uh, roughly 17 posters and each of these posters correspond to one of the sustainable development goals. Uh, and each of them is a complete lesson plan for children on a number of um, key areas in which uh, you know, young people can think globally, but act locally. And this is all part, again, of the, uh, the approach of policing through the lens of human rights and the importance of, of human rights in, um, in, in, in the work that we do. In the center of the room, there's a, a beautiful carpet with, about, with nine uh, uh, human attributes. All of these individual building blocks in age-appropriate nuggets for young children to learn about human rights speaking about respect, unity, peace, harmony, love, caring, justice, sharing, and friends. And all of those concepts are uh, what the educators will be uh, working on with young children as they visit this classroom. Within the classroom, we also have the uh, Sankofa uh, educational series, a series of books on African heritage and culture. 
as well as um, a package uh, called Social Justice Begins With Me from the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. And at the Safety Village, we have educators we've, uh, that, that are civilian members, and they will be uh, uh, collaborating with, um, um, with, with some of the partners we have at York, at York University. Uh, and also we've, uh, we've, been, we've connected with the Ontario Human Rights Commission uh, just to also get their assistance and guidance as we move through this uh, process of education at the human rights education classroom. Uh, on the wall of the classroom, we have a beautiful quilt that we purchased uh, uh, late last year. And this is a quilt that's uh, entitled The Fabric of Our Being. And it was uh, created by the artist uh, named Nadine Williams, the lady on the right side of your screen that's holding it. It's, uh, it's to commemorate the international decade of people of African uh, heritage uh, uh, as commemorated by the United Nations. And this, uh, this actual quilt is a, uh, it speaks about the contributions of people of African heritage to Canada. So on the continent of Africa, you can see superimposed in that is, uh, is uh, uh, Canada's uh, provinces and territories. And the quilt is surrounded by kente cloth, which is a traditional uh, African cloth. And it is hung up on the wall uh, as a beautiful quilt within the human rights classroom. Um, also in the classroom, we have a quilt from the Chippewas of Georgina Island, which is the circle of life. And it speaks to, um, uh, again, the strong relationship that we have uh, within York region with the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nations uh, in, the, in the region. Um, so in leveraging, so in, in um, so inspired by the, um, inspired by, by the vision and the, um, uh, and the mission and focused on the values of York Regional Police, like in an era of global conflict, social unrest, political upheaval, you know, which directly impacts issues of safety, security, and quality of life for so many members of our human family. Uh, and policing through the lens of human rights continues to maintain York Regional Police's proactive response readiness to the many emerging challenges and opportunities impacting rapid changes in York Region. This readiness also necessitate, necessitates policing through the lens of human rights to navigate York Regional Police on a steady course into 21st century policing while building on policing's historic and traditional roles of peacemaking and peacekeeping to now include peace building. And in leveraging the community profile of our large police organization, we are also committed to going beyond the traditional roles of law enforcement and crime prevention to explore early intervention approaches through integrated uh, and positive social development uh, while helping to build capacity in multicultural communities. And these approaches require the building and strengthening of community partnerships, uh, maintaining a global mindset, getting ahead of the issues, identifying potential flashpoints, and strong collaborations towards building socially cohesive, resilient, and inclusive communities. And this training for members of York Regional Police through the, um, through the work that we do as well, also encompasses five key areas. Um, uh, number one, being policing through the lens of human rights as an overarching approach to the way we engage and serve multicultural communities. Number two, uh, policing with a global mindset, which really speaks to understanding how, how broad uh, you know, the definitions of diversity are, uh, understanding and respecting diversity of thought, diversity of ex experience, diversity of perspectives, uh, diversity of identities, and understanding the global impact of the world within our community of York region each and every day. Number three, a time of a crisis is not the time to be exchanging business cards, a philosophy that we use at York Regional Police, which really speaks to the importance of, of um, proactive policing, getting out ahead of the issues, building the relationships before, before any crisis hits, getting to know people, getting to engage, and truly getting to understand and learn about our community in, in a, in a, in deeper, on deeper levels. Number four, policing with humility and empathy. Policing with humility, primarily because as members of York Regional Police, we are entrusted. We are, um, we are entrusted by the community um, to, 
to keep the community safe and secure. It's an incredible privilege to serve in this capacity and uh, recognizing that policing with empathy also now requires us to engage with people with different perspectives from different parts of the world, trying to understand the issues from their perspective, putting our perspective, uh, putting ourselves in, in, in their shoes, trying to understand the community perspectives and how would we be engaging with, with, with any member for that matter if it, was our, if it was our own family. So policing with empathy and compassion, very, very important. Um, and finally, leading with your humanity, leading with our humanity, which really speaks to the importance of never allowing the uniform to constrict our humanity, but rather allowing the uniform to enhance and uh, amplify your humanity. And these are some of the approaches that we engage in at your regional police. Um, on Saturday, December the 7th, uh, 2019, and this was just before uh, COVID, this was one of the last uh, big events that we held at York Regional Police, which was, um, uh, it was International Day for the, International Human Rights Day. And this is how we come in for the past, for the past uh, 16 years, we've been, hosting, we've been hosting annual citizenship ceremonies. And on this particular day, we welcomed another diverse and joyful gathering of 100 people from around the world in search of new opportunities and new lives to take the oath of citizenship and proudly become the newest members of our Canadian family, as you see in this photo right here. And this particular photo was taken the moment everyone was sworn in as Canadians and, uh, and, uh, and raised their flags. So at York Regional Police, we will continue to manage, to monitor and strategically respond to the impacts and outcomes and complexities of a di diverse array of micro geopolitics always at play within our multicultural communities. While we simultaneously explore and nurture all opportunities to build and support socially cohesive, resilient and inclusive communities and individual and community sense of belonging to further enhance the quality of life and peaceful coexistence for all stakeholders in our dynamic region. The quote that I have right here um, from Chief, Chief McGlo uh, uh, former Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin, <coughs> excuse me, it says, whether we like it or not, ethnic, uh, religious, ethnic, and cultural diversity is part of our modern world and increasingly part of our national and community reality. Human rights and the respect for every individual upon which they rest offer the best hope for reconciling the conflicts this diversity is bound to generate. If we are to live together in peace and harmony within our nation and as nations in the wider world, we must find ways to accommodate each other. Human rights expressed in the fabric of our law and administered by our courts and tribunals provides a way to accomplish this. Again, uh, I, I, I mentioned that at York Regional Police, our focus is policing through the lens of human rights and not human rights through the lens of policing, which again is something very, very different. So in closing, when I look so in closing and in reference to our collective responsibility towards a community that is safe, secure, welcoming, inclusive, and where everyone feels a sense of, uh, of uh, belonging, I leave you with this final point for consideration as to why at York Regional Police, our commitment to integrated and collaborative partnerships in our multicultural community continues to remain stronger than ever. When I look at this region, I see a little more. Plus que du béton et de l'asphalte. Oltre i confini e le barriere. Ye ke wal maidan hi nahi hai. Bu jin jin si ke gao bu de di fang. Da ni zai fu jin kan de wo shi, si wan ni bu jin jin ba wo dan qing yi min jin guan. I hope you see a friend. A partner. Someone who stands next to you in your own community. When I look at this region, I see an endroit where the actions are less than the words. And where people mean more than their color. Dharm. Gender. Gerayes. Citizenship. Nationality. Ability. Lean Leng. Or the uniform we wear. York Regional Police and the community 
Together, we are more. Thank you very much, Superintendent Virapan, for your excellent presentation and for sharing your extensive knowledge and insights with us. Before we move to the question and answer, I would like to ask Gary Thompson, Vice Chair of the Vaughan Public Library Board, to say a few words. Gary? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Gary Thompson, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Vaughan Public Library Board. On behalf of everyone in the audience and of all of us at the Vaughan Public Libraries, I'd like to thank Superintendent Verifan, popularly known as Ricky in the community, for this absolutely great presentation. I've seen Ricky do presentations before, but Ricky, you hit the ball out of the park this time. Um, this is absolutely amazing. Over the past year, we've looked at many different aspects of the Black experience in Canada. And there can be no doubt that the relationships between the community and law enforcement have shaped and continue to shape the ongoing dialogue of relationships within the community. Vaughan and York Region as a whole are remarkably diverse communities. And as such, we know that racism has no place in any corner of our society. And that our police service play a critical role in combating that, as well as ensuring that everyone is treated fairly, regardless of their color, their religion, or their creed. A global and inclusive approach to policing helps to build confidence, erode fear of persecution, and reshape how we view each other. Ricky, you have my sincere gratitude for helping us on this journey. And at this time, I'd just like to sort of step out of the realm here and thank Superintendent Ricky Verifin for his many years of service to the citizens of York Region. Ricky, you, you have been a beacon of hope to many of us. You have stepped up and, 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 and in difficult times done the right thing and, and, and taken the courage to reach out and to build communities, to build relationships with communities. Ladies and gentlemen, Superintendent Ricky Verifan will be retiring from York Regional Police. But this is not the end. As Winston Churchill said, this is not the end, but it is the end, it is the beginning. And the beginning is that in a week, uh, in a week or so, Ricky Verifan now takes his abilities, his track record, and his humble stature and puts that at the service of the people of Ontario. Ricky Verifin, uh, Ricky, I hope I get the title right, will be the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion for the Ontario Provincial Police. The first such individual of the Ontario Provincial Police. And it is a great honor that we in York, that as a son of York Region, that Ricky has been chosen to fill this position. Ricky, go with God and know that your friends, and I will say all the residents of York region, stand in support of you and in gratitude for what you've done for our community. Thank you to everyone for attending, and I hope to see you all at our next session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you very much, Gary, and congratulations, um, Ricky Virapan. We would now like to open the floor to questions. If you have a question for our guest presenter, please submit it in, in the chat function, and we will share it with everyone. 
So I do see that we do have some comments, Ricky. Some of the comments are congratulations. Um, so here's a comment, great presentation. What stands in the way of greater advances of getting ahead of the issues? Thank you very much, um, Alicia. Uh, before I, before I, um, I, I, I comment on that, I'd like to just uh, acknowledge a few of my colleagues that have joined us on this, uh, on this call this evening. Um, we've got um, Ryan Hogan, who, is, uh, who actually will be the new superintendent in charge of community services uh, as of next Monday. He's uh, Ryan, welcome Ryan. Uh, we have Inspector Alice Sang. Inspector Sang is the uh, inspector that is in charge of our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Bureau, leading all kinds of incredible change in this area. She runs the hate crime team as well as the, um, the diversity outreach team. Um, we have uh, Sergeant Gary Sanger, who I'm sure many of you know in the Vaughan area. Uh, Gary is uh, an icon in the community. Uh, stellar uh, uh, officer and very, very much engaged uh, in many, many different initiatives in Vaughan. And um, I don't know if there's anyone else here from, uh, from YRP, but um, uh, anyway, the, these, are, these are some of the members that I'd like to acknowledge. You know, everything we do here at York Regional Police, it's a team approach, right? So this is, uh, this is the, these are the members of TA, Team YRP that I'd like to introduce this evening. So nice to see all of you guys. Uh, I'm sorry, Alicia, could you just uh, repeat that question uh, and, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Well, Ricky, okay. I, think, I think Staff Sergeant Colin Alexander is on, is on too. Oh, is, is Colin on there as well? Um, well, if Colin, if Colin is on there, Colin Alexander is the Staff Sergeant that oversees the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Bureau, specifically the Diversity Outreach Team and the, uh, and the Hate Crime Team. Welcome, Colin. Sorry, I didn't see your name on the on the screen there, but uh, welcome, Colin, if you're there as well. Thanks very much, Kate. And we also have a board member, Sanger. Okay, um, so the question is, um, great presentation. What stands in the way of greater advances of getting ahead of the issues? Um, yeah, you know, thank, thank you very much. For, thank you very much for that question. Uh, you know, uh, the type of work that we do at York Regional Police is heavily dependent on community collaborations and partnerships. You know, um, it's critically important that in order for us to move ahead as a society, that we all move ahead together. No one, no one gets left behind. You know, when we uh, look at um, uh, how do we do this? It's important that we collaborate, that we, we, we work together. We, and there's many different uh, examples of how this is done within the community. But essentially my point is that when a member of the Jewish community is targeted by hate crime, it's not only members of the Jewish community that should be offended by that. We should all be offended. When a member of the black community is targeted, we should all be offended. And when a member of the Muslim community is targeted, we should all be offended. It doesn't make a difference what our own backgrounds are, but we should be offended because we're all Canadian. And that's what's most important, that another Canadian, uh, that another Canadian is being targeted by hate crime. So it's important to come together on occasions like that. It's important to recognize that, you know, even going beyond our own uh, backgrounds and our own uh, um, uh, ethnicity and heritage, it's important to stand up for others who may not be like us. But again, it's through the fact that we share a common humanity. And again, we should be offended because we're all Canadians. So in order for moving ahead, my perspective is that uh, it's important to work together and it's important to always look out for each other. Thank you. The next question is, is it a colorblind philosophy? No, it's, uh, it's not. It's not a colorblind philosophy. Color is part of diversity and color is part of our community. And I think it's really about embracing diversity in all of its wonderful dimensions, uh, recognizing that color is also a part of diversity. So when we look at um, you know, the incredible diversity of our, of our community with all of the wonderful attributes of human diversity, 1.2 million expressions that, that we see within York region, recognize that we are connected by something even deeper than that, which is the common humanity. So, you know, color is, is, uh, is, must be a part of that as well. Okay. 
Thanks. The next question is, can you speak to how this vision is translated into training of police officers to realize deeds speak? Absolutely. Um, actions speak louder than words, which is the motto uh, we, uh, I've lived it for almost 34 years and many of my colleagues, uh, we, we, we're all very, very familiar with that. But certainly we need to, you know, it, it's, you know, they say, there's a saying that goes, when all was said and done, more was said than done. And, and, and that's really not, not, not the approach that we should be taking. Again, from a York Regional Police perspective, deed speak truly means a lot to what this organization is all about. Uh, and again, I would, I would direct you to the, um, to the website of the Police Services Board to take a look at the 51 recommendations uh, that were made to York Regional Police and some of the actions that we've embarked on in, 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 um, in, um, in speaking to those, to those, uh, uh, in speaking to those, um, those recommendations. Furthermore, every single day, I said uh, earlier on, I come to work, um, you know, I'm, I'm a member of the community like many of my colleagues. I'm a member of the community. Um, you know, I, I have children, I, I, I pay taxes, I take my garbage out, I go shopping, I do everything else. But when I come to work, I put on a uniform that says York Regional Police, like many of my colleagues. I and many of, the, of, of my colleagues are proud members of York Regional Police. Um, and one of the reasons we are very proud members of York Regional is because of the, the motto of this organization, which is deeds speak, actions speak louder than words. It's important to, to plan and to be able to, uh, to discuss uh, initiatives and programs, but action is really what it's all about. So uh, as long as we're continually moving towards action, I think we're moving in the right direction. Okay, thanks. So the next question is, we know there's a different experience to those who fall in the intersectionality of race, class, sexuality, and gender. Can you speak to how this is being recognized and steps taken to assist those in the community who are marginalized due to this intersectionality? Absolutely. We recognize there are, there are people within our communities that have been marginalized, that have been ostracized, that are racialized, that are victimized. Uh, we recognize that uh, many people in our, in our communities have, have, have experienced exploitation, powerlessness, uh, violence, uh, you know, um, there's so many different aspects to our lives, uh, and also intersectionality is 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 a part of the, the the diversity of York region. Policing through the lens of human rights is the overarching uh, philosophy and approach that we take at York Regional Police. And again, I said policing through the human rights and not human rights through the lens of policing, which again is something very, very different. Human rights has to be the overarching factor which encompasses all segments and aspects of human diversity and, in, and includes intersectionality. You know, um, we know there are people within our communities that have had some, some traumatic experiences and have suffered and uh, sometimes at the hands of police and sometimes uh, as a result of uh, interactions with the police. I come to work every day like my colleagues uh, every single day um, to serve our community and uh, public service has been a phenomenal um, uh, venue for me to, to um, you know, to continue to advance human rights and social justice, just like many of my colleagues over here. But we do recognize that there are people that are victimized on multiple levels uh, and, and often uh, because of intersectional issues. So the human rights through the policing through the lens of human rights approach that we take, like I said, is an all encompassing uh, approach that uh, that no one is left, you know, it, it covers it covers every aspect of, of who we are as as people. And this is the approach that we continue to take at York Regional Police. Okay, thank you. The next question is, can you speak a little further about the idea that we should not be exchanging business cards in a moment of crisis? What does this look like practically? Absolutely, and I've got I've got multiple examples of this, um, and I'll start off with um, with the um, so essentially what essentially what it means. Uh, the time of a crisis is not the time to be exchanging business cards, and really what it speaks to is the importance of proactive policing. 
the work that our offices do on a daily basis in getting out there, getting to meet people, not waiting for people to come to York Regional Police and for the very first time meet them and understand what some of those very critical issues are, whether they're cultural, religious, social, ideological, whatever that may be. Uh, a time of a crisis is not the time to ex be exchanging business card, further speaks to the importance of us going out into the community, understanding who makes up the community, understanding some of the very unique issues that, uh, that make up the community of York Region and embracing all of that in our very privileged role as, as police officers and, and how we serve that incredibly complex array of diversity within communities. It also means that within our region, we have to recognize there are communities with large profiles, medium profiles, small profiles, as well as communities with no profile. And who are those communities? Who are the ones that exist on the fringes? So I think the, 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 the good thing about this is that we will never ever get there. We can never ever get to a point where we say we're done because uh, you know, then, then we become complacent. I, I think it's important that we continually work towards that. And that becomes a, a destination that is way down, way down, down the road. And, and all the little accomplishments that we do achieve are little milestones on the road to that destination. So police, so um, a time of a crisis is not the time to be exchanging business card. Once again, speaks to the importance of proactive policing, getting, up, getting ahead of the issues, identifying potential flashpoints, connecting with, um, with, with religious communities when there's, a, when there's an event around the, in, in another part of the world that is impacting uh, religious communities and those denominations within the region or cultural groups. So this is what it, it really speaks to. And, and this is how we operationalize it at York Regional Police through the work that we do with, uh, in multicultural environments. Okay, thank you. Going forward, does YRP have any new ideas on how to get more members of the region involved in working with, it, with the YRP? How does YRP plan to inform the public on different ways to work with YRP and or trust in YRP? Absolutely. Um, well, one of the ways I would first of all speak about engagement is that York Regional Police, we have a number of uh, community consultative committees. We have the Police Community Advisory Council, which is known as PCAC, which, is, which operates at a, um, at a regional level and works with our executive command team, which is made up of our chief and our four deputy chiefs of police. York, region is York Regional Police breaks down the region into five individual districts, and each district has a superintendent that is in charge of that district, and each superintendent runs their own district community liaison committees. So we would encourage, encourage you, whatever, whatever area you live in in York Region, the local district uh, that serves your particular community We'll have a district liaison committee. We're always encouraging members to join. It allows us to gain different perspectives and insights uh, in, in, in just in a very diverse community like the region. There is no one size fits all approach. Every Each one of our districts are unique in their own ways. And we encourage that type of engagement. Furthermore, our um, strategic services department puts out uh, surveys and does uh, community focus groups and uh, you know, if you ever have an opportunity to be engaged in that, we would encourage that because all of those types of things really help us uh, understand the dynamic nature of our community and some of the areas that we need to be corresponding on uh, to improve our services to a multicultural community. One last point I'd make about that is uh, when it comes to recruiting, uh, York Regional Police is a world-class organization. And I don't only say that because I've been here for 34 years, but it truly is. It's one of the big 12 services in Ontario. Uh, we've got incredible uh, staffing and resources and technologies uh, at, that really um, uh, makes us very privileged to work in this capacity. I would encourage you, if you know young people, uh, if you have friends, family, anyone that is interested in a career in policing to consider York Regional Police, uh, because sometimes in order to make the changes, uh, it's good to be within the system itself. And, have a wonderful career through that process as well. Okay, thanks. The next question is how prevalent are hate crimes in York region? Are they predominantly committed by youth as a form of mischief? Um, there, are many, there are many factors that, 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 um, that determine the, um, 
the, the numbers of hate crime reported. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we recognize that there's underreporting, and, and we, we may not we may not see all the numbers. But from the numbers that we do get over the past um, 20 years, I would say we've ranged in numbers from from roughly 60 hate crimes to roughly 160 hate crimes uh, reported to York Regional Police. Uh, what is important is that people report hate crime because we recognize hate crime has a tremendous detrimental effect on communities. It's very, very traumatic and it can really destroy the sense of um, belonging that people have within communities. All of the work that we do in hate crime prevention is geared towards building cohesive communities, building resilient communities, working with vulnerable communities that have been victimized and sometimes persecuted and sometimes face genocide in other parts of the world. Um, and really working towards building inclusive communities. So with the prevalence of hate crime, uh, we prosecute to the full extent of the law. We've got a very robust and dynamic hate crime investigation team. And um, it's critically important that those numbers are reported or those incidents are reported to the police. I will also just differentiate between hate crime and hate incidents. A hate crime, uh, yeah, there's gotta be a criminal offense and there's gotta be an element of hate bias or prejudice. A uh, hate incident is the same type of thing where there's no criminal offense, but we encourage people to report hate incidents to York Regional Police as well, even though there may not be any criminality. Uh, quite often, some of the perpetrators of hate incidents will push the envelope. And uh, if, you, if, if you think of hate crime as the tip of the iceberg and the water level as the threshold of criminality, then hate, hate incidents are sometimes what exists below the surface. And it's important to expose people who, uh, who uh, profess hate within our communities, who create um, uh, anxiety and fear amongst community members. And it's important that, that, that we know about those, uh, we know that those things are happening and we do a lot of work collectively to combat hate within our communities. Thank you. The next question is, would a community that is safer and healthier require less police and therefore less investment in a police task force? Would you support it if democratically supporting a pay cut towards police services, hmm. despite it being a personal sacrifice on your part? I do not mean to offend, but I wonder about certain conflicts of interest. Thank you for that question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, ultimately, this is our community. I'm a member of this community, like many of my colleagues. I mentioned we're all, we're all residents, we're all taxpayers in this community as well. Uh, you know, um, York Regional Police is a, is a professional organization with many, many different areas of expertise in community safety, security, and well-being. So, you know, uh, I guess based on the question that was asked. Um, you know, this would be, this would be something that would be dealt with perhaps at a uh, at a different level from where I'm at. But uh, what is important is that what 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 whatever the outcome of a of a of a question like that is that the the stability of uh, safety and security within communities is firm. That there's no compromise on safety and security. And currently, the role of our members at York Regional Police is really what that is. Uh, uh, um, our role is really focusing on that. Right keeping uh, safety, security, as well as community well-being. And the reason I talk about well-being is because when we talk about peace building, you know, historically and traditionally policing, uh, police officers have been peacemakers and peacekeepers. And now we have a very unique opportunity to be peace builders as well. And that means working together with our communities. So if you have any additional questions, oh yes, here's another question. Do we have community night programs in YRP? Uh, yes, we do. And, and we've had for many, many years, uh, we've had many different types of uh, events, but unfortunately due to COVID over the last uh, year and a half, we've had to really uh, abide by all the COVID restrictions. And we were very excited that uh, when, when uh, at the appropriate time, when, when some of the measures, uh, COVID measures uh, have been, uh, uh, moved or, 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 uh, or no longer exist, that we'll be able to get back together in many of the different initiatives that we've um, that we've done for many years, including uh, programs that run at night, including uh, in in person meetings and many many other initiatives. Thanks. The next question is: Are there 
regular information sessions about legal limits and guidelines being presented at newcomer centers? Uh, yes, um, we have, as I mentioned, we have a uh, diversity, equity and inclusion bureau, which is, uh, which is um, run by Inspector Alice Sang. Uh, she's got a team of uh, diversity officers that engage on a regular basis at welcome centers on a variety of different types of programming. Uh, one of the more uh, things that we've done more recently is also engage with the Canadian Civil Liberties Education Trust, uh, recognizing the, uh, you know, sometimes the mistrust for police that people may have. And we would say, well, you know, we will, we will connect you to an agency that is uh, focused on civil liberties and human rights uh, across the country. And that's the Canadian Civil Liberties Association and the Education Trust. So speak to them directly. And so we've, we've We've sort of brokered those types of uh, relationships as well in the welcome centers, uh, uh, as well as uh, the Canadian Museum of Human Rights in understanding some of the broader parameters of Canadian history and, and, uh, and human diversity. Okay, great. So I'm not seeing any more questions. If you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll just, um, I'll just um, keep it open for one more minute. Alicia. Yes, Gary, go ahead. I just wanted to um, just put a plug here. The welcome centers um, throughout the pandemic never closed. We, we pivoted um, to going virtual. And I would welcome anyone who has an interest, who is a newcomer or has an interest in, in um, finding out about uh, newcomer programs and what's available to them to visit the website of the welcome centers and someone will reach out to you. Uh, we continue to see a lot of uh, residents. We continue to support the newcomers straight through the pandemic. So I just wanted to put that in. And also thanks to York Regional Police for the great support they've given us at the welcome centers. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks for that information. So here's the last question, Ricky. Um, when calling York Regional Police, is it possible to request an officer speaking a specific language? Absolutely. Um, you know, this is part of um, policing with a global mindset and policing through the lens of human rights. At York Regional Police, our members are 2,300 members that make up York Regional Police. Our members speak 56 different languages and uh, we do speak all of the major languages uh, of York Region. Uh, that are currently uh, present in York region. And um, we also have uh, access to, uh, to uh, language services should we have a, a situation where we're not able to. But most certainly, uh, we have many calls for service where people request a certain language. And uh, for the most part, we can accommodate that. So thank you all for submitting your questions and, and your comments of congratulations to Ricky Virapan. Um, and also Ricky, they're saying thank you very much for the session, of course. So um, we will wrap up the session. On behalf of Vaughan Public Libraries, I would again like to thank Superintendent Ricky Vivira Pan for joining us tonight. And thank you to all of you for taking the time to participate in this lecture. We hope to see you again for our very last session in this series. Uh, it's going to be on Tuesday, November the 23rd on allyship and solidarity with attorneys at law Nina Gupta and Rebecca Bromwich from Gowling WLG. Registration is now available on Eventbrite and the link I think has been posted in the chat. Good night everyone and keep well. <laughs>